Good morning, folks. We took an M flare in the early hours this morning. It does not appear that there is any ejecta from this burst, but it is indeed pretty to look at. The solar flare peaked at M1.3, had a second peak in mid-sea range. Let's just watch the surface surging amidst the event here, slowed down at 171 angstroms. We are seeing a rapid dropout of sunspots. We're left with only the big group down south having any complexity as it has a gamma class characterization, but no developed delta zones. Solar wind speed ticks back up slightly, but with an equal drop in density. The geomagnetic systems are quite calm at the moment. Looking at the coronal holes on Iswa, we see tremendous force remaining in the southern opening. Indeed, that is the only portion of the opening that is easily visible. Tough to see the northern extension from this. Keep in mind that after this coronal hole, the next one is positive, which will finally change near Earth influence. Now as you watch these umbral fields coming over the southeastern limb, enormous compared to the Earth's scale. Take note of what is lurking within and just behind them, a dark, huge plasma filament, bigger than any currently on the Earth-facing disk. It's coming in. Keeping with the solar magnetic fields, but switching to the poles. The solar polar fields have been updated, and if the North is planning on finishing this reversal sometime soon, it isn't making the rest of us very confident, is it? Are we still not done yet? It's possible. Top quakes of the day were an unusual location uptick in Oregon, seeing more of those this fall. Also had two moderate tremors on the Pacific Ring in South America. Uptick is expected soon. We're at the ESA in Planck for an update to the findings. Much of the information here revolves around trying to understand the microwave background, but something interesting is how when they seek to quantify the temperature of the dust and gases, these thin, long, universe-scale lines appear. Those are galactic magnetic fields. Dear Wall Thornhill, I think they're calling your name on this one. NASA's Earth Observatory showing how the Amazon River shifts over time. This one is linked for you below, along with the first stories compiling November cold influence in the U.S. If you've been watching the media try to play off this November cold, you cannot help but laugh at them. Shifting to the strongest storm on Earth, Super Typhoon in the West Pacific and just off the coast of the Philippines. Hopefully it will swing north quickly and miss that landfall, but I wouldn't count on it. Let's look at the huge counterclockwise driving low bringing record rain to the west, shattering records actually. Flows off the Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico are drawing major moisture up to the states. The rain continues, snow in the north. In Europe, we still see the flow to Norway and the remaining storms in the south and central areas. Long convergence remains off the North Atlantic low. I can count at least three lows in the Mediterranean as well. Weather shares, please. Down under, you can see the converging air masses. This extends from New Zealand up through that same area of Australia. Clouds and purple watch zones will follow there and shift slightly eastward throughout the night. Got some shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.